hey guys, what's happening? So, my KitchenAid dishwasher's act up again. So I went to do a lot of dishes here, and I went to start it. Sorry, it's the dirty dishes, but no power on this thing at all. <clears throat> the control board. I've actually made several videos about this, this dishwasher. It gives me all kinds of... I have to fix it, it seems like, once a year. Um, so... I'm thinking it's a thermal fuse because um, I'm not getting any sort of lights here and no a power here uh, on the control board. Um, another indication too is it might have overheated because I see this right here, this water at the bottom. So it didn't fully drain out. So typically when you get no power or you burn the thermal fuse, um, I mean usually something caused it. So there might be a clog in the bottom. So it might have overloaded the motor and then that basically generated a uh, high current situation. Like it requires more current, right? So when your when your motor is clogged up or like a, it has to work harder, it basically has to flow more current to actually make it work. And that's actually what will trigger the thermal fuse. You know, thermal meaning that it gets to a certain temperature, then it'll pop. So, um, so like I said, the more this thing actually has to work, the hotter the fuse will get, and the more likely that it will it'll pop, burn out. So. Um, actually, I'm, I've worked on this thing so many times that I don't even... I'm going to just take the, the, the screws off here. One, two, three, six screws. The whole front panel should come off. Um, so typically, even with... Uh, the reason why I don't think it's the switch, the latch fit switch right here, is because um, even with the, the door open, I'd still get power here to the control board. So I, that's why I'm really thinking it's a thermal fuse. But I'll, go, I'll take the panel off and I'll, I'll grab my multimeter and we'll uh, troubleshoot it. I mean, the fuse is only five bucks, so not the end of the world, but I mean, I guess you could reset it, you know, pull the power out. I've actually had to fix that before, just pulling the power out and resetting it, but it's a headache to get this thing out. I had to unscrew it, pull it out, you know, so um, I'm at least, I'm going to just right now to see if I'm actually getting power on the input. I would say this is, a, this is a KitchenAid dishwasher and it runs a T15 Torx. So right now I have this thing hot, but you know, if you're not familiar with electrical systems, you should probably unplug it. Um, I mean, I work on electrical systems for a living, so um, yeah, I'm just going to do it hot. So, and plus I'm, I'm really familiar with this thing already. So two more teeth. I have to take the uh, latch off to get the front cover off because the control board is underneath this little panel right here. All right, so that is the thermal freezer right there, the little white thing right there. So like I said, this should be hot. So um, comes through and this actually feeds back the motor. So <clears throat> if the latch is not latched, the motor will never start. So see that black white stripe? It goes to the actual uh, <coughs> door switch. Um, so what I need to do is test continuity here, or even, uh, I don't know what the, this is 110 AC, so <clears throat> there'd be a neutral and a hot. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna test continuity here at this fuse real fast. And then if it does actually have continuity, and then uh, I might just unplug it and reset it, but yeah. So if I have continuity here, then I know it's not the thermal fuse. All right, let me show you how it's, I can just test voltage. I can already do continuity. So I have one probe in the uh, white wire, which is the actual neutral wire. The black is a hot. I have my flip multimeter here. So my input, I'm getting 120 volt, 119 volt. Hope you can see it on the camera. Right, that's the that's the input side. Now the side that feeds back to the the main switch, I should get should be getting 120 here, but I'm not. See that? So that means I'm not getting any voltage past that thermal fuse. All right, so that means it's the thermal fuse. All right, so instead of actually buying those. Uh the single-use fuses. I decided to convert this to a self-resetting fuse. They're also called bimetal fuses, and um, so what they're supposed to do is once they overheat, they'll, they're supposed to trigger, but once they cool down, they're supposed to self-reset. Um, sometimes if they don't self-reset, you just gotta tap them real hard, but um, yeah, I'm hoping if this happens again, I don't have to keep on buying fuses, so I designed this little converter bracket so it fits onto the PCB or the, or the connector next to the PCB. And it's going to hold the fuse right here. And I'll, I'll show you that in the next video, next part of the video. But, um, all right, I'll, I'll put this on my uh, Thingiverse page.
down below. All right, so here is the new uh, self-resetting thermal fuse. So if you shake it, you can hear it in there. So what happens is when this thing tr when it trips, it like bends out of shape, and it no longer is a, creates a contact. So what you can do is you can whack them, you know, and then uh, or sometimes you can drill them out and reset them that way. It might even be a little. I'm not sure. You can drill them out and pop it in and reset it, but usually you can just whack them pretty hard and reset it. So. Uh, yeah, here's the bracket printed out that I showed you in the other video, or the other part of the video. So it actually has those little clips. So it's going to be replacing that thing right there. Um, so I think this thing has failed like twice in the last like three years probably. Um, so I decided, like I said, just to convert to this um, self-resetting views. Yeah, you definitely want... Like you can't not have a thermal fuse. And then it becomes unsafe because if your motor locks up, um, what's going to happen is you'll melt your wires, you'll burst them on the board. So, um, yeah, you need some sort of thermal, some kind of fuse protection. So this was my first attempt, and it, I uh, put the snaps in backwards, so um, it's going to be reversing that. So, all right. Um, and this, I'll say all, it's still hot wires, it's still live wires, so. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is what I do for a living, so I'm not too stressed about it. All right, now that I plugged the thermal fuse in, I'm getting a light now on the panel. So um, when I said I do this for a living, I mean I don't fix appliances for a living. I'm uh, I work in IT and I do electrical systems. So um, all right, so let's uh, put this back together. I mean, normally you should unplug this thing. You shouldn't be doing it hot. <laughs> yeah, so definitely unplug it if you're not comfortable with this stuff. Uh, save you from getting shocked. All right, so I'm draining the water right now. So to drain the water out of the bottom, hit cancel, and then we'll, uh, he might hit it a couple times, and then we'll drain the water out. But once I know this thing works, I'll put the cover back on. But obviously, yeah, if, uh, I mean, this is where you'd actually overload the motor. Hear that? So at 85 degrees Celsius, this thing will pop. Once there's enough current going through it, like, so basically if a motor locks up, it's going to draw a huge amount of current and it's going to heat that, that fuse up. So basically it heats the whole wire up the fuse up and that's when it pops the fuse. So if you're new to this channel, um, what FinTech, so originally the company that I started 20 years ago, uh, I worked in financial technologies. So I write, I wrote financial software and uh, communications. I did phone systems for like uh, financial companies, banks, call centers. And, uh, but yeah, so it started off me like, you know, this channel started off me just fixing phone systems and stuff. Then I started incorporating just everything I fix on a daily, daily uh, basis. So appliances, cars, electronics, computers, you know, whatever. So yeah, I work in IT. So I do actually have some IT videos from time to time. Actually, I actually have to upload a whole bunch. I got VMware servers and a lot of Dell server installations, ubiquity networks, but all right, looks like we're ready to go. Let's see uh, if I can. This thing's not put back together yet. Very flimsy. Let's see that the water is empty. All right, now I can run this thing and see what happens. If I get my finger in there. All right, all right, we're doing the first run. All right, well that's it. So, like I said, if you're not comfortable with the uh, you know, doing the conversion, just put the original one back on, you know. This thing was probably five bucks, but I'm just sick of having to replace this thing, so it'd be nice if I could just take this apart and whack it if I need to reset it. Or figure out what the cause is, why it keeps on doing it. So I need to probably take it apart and see if there's a clog somewhere in the in the, the water pickup. Alright, that's it for this video. Awesome.